hey guys thanks for watching and coming along for another adventure we are going back to this native american camp that red discovered a few weeks back now this thing is untouched but it came very close to being destroyed it's only 20 feet away from what used to be a cornfield we have found several places as we've been excavating that have held charcoal indications of a fire I know that there's going to be several fire pits probably because this area was used for a long period of time and we were hoping and waiting to find one intact that's what you're going to see in this video it's one of the coolest experiences I've ever had with a shovel in my hand and the way that it was found boy just gave me goosebumps looking for artifacts is not an easy thing to do it's a whole lot of looking and very little finding so we had actually dug a couple different test pits and realized we weren't in the right spot the whole time though red had been looking at this spot that was not the easiest to access it was really grown up and he kept saying man i can just see him sitting right over there i can see him sitting right over there so finally we decided to go beat the weeds and give it a go. And Red pinpointed the exact spot where thousands of years ago the Native Americans were sitting. And you're going to get to see it come out of the ground. Not only the fire pit, but the artifacts that laid right next to it. Hope you enjoy this one. All right, David is on another fire pit. we got some the rock coming out. You can see the color change. This sort of thing just don't ever get old. Red found this fire pit and this is one of them lined fire pits. Check this out. Everywhere inside this dark circle right here, you got rock just lining on the bottom. And there is even some charcoal coming out which red is going to throw into a bag and keep just in case one day maybe carbon dating becomes an easy thing to do we'll keep it with all these artifacts just another little way to preserve a little bit of history if your idea of native american cooking consists of sticking an animal on the end of a stick and hanging it out over an open fire uh, you couldn't be further from the truth they had much better techniques for cooking one of those was the lined fire pit. A lined fire pit would start with a small depression being dug in the ground. Now, if you're in the middle of a village, we would expect this fire pit to be much bigger, maybe four or five feet across. But since we're at a small encampment, small fire pit. Didn't need to feed as many people. So once the depression's dug, you line it with rock and you light a fire. You continue to add wood until those rocks are glowing hot. Now, while this is going on, you take your animal, whether it's fish, small game, or even a large chunk of meat, you know, a ham or something off of a deer, and you wrap it in grape leaves, maple leaves, something like that, and you bind it up with cordage or even vine. Once the rocks are hot enough, the charcoal was removed, a layer of grass was laid down on top of the rocks, and then the piece of meat. The whole thing covered with dirt, and then it was left. It was an oven. A few hours later, you come back up, dig everything up, and unwrap your meat, and it's dinner time. Sounds like something I'd like to try sometime. Guys, this is about as cool as it gets in our book. Look at this. Isn't that incredible? Perfect fire pit. And here's a real good example of another good indicator for artifacts and that would be fire rock hey, it's a lot of times you're not going to see the black on it a lot of times but you're going to see a color change a lot of times it'll turn a reddish color and you're going to have sharp fractures see all that's fractured from the heat and you start seeing that in the middle of a plowed field and you know that you're probably pretty close to where they were sitting and that's what's so cool about this here we sit Right where they sat. And you can just see that outline perfect. 
just gives you a great feeling. All right, fire pit uncovered. We'll see if anything else is around it. Now, something that metal detectorists use all the time to help them find stuff is that we look for areas that people are drawn to. If you're going to metal detect a yard and you only had 15 minutes, the first place you're probably going to check are the areas to the sides of the walkways. It's where most people traveled across the yard and where most things will be lost. That holds true for Native American encampments too, and there was no greater gathering spot than the old fire pit. A lot of work and activity went on around the fire. So as we found this fire pit, we start digging the ground around it, and here's what we find, and it's amazing. Tools left exactly where they were dropped all those years ago. Look at there. I'm calling that a drill. That is awesome. Always wanted to find one of them. So we're going to see what else comes out of the dirt. That one made my day though. All right, one more cool artifact, and I think we're gonna head out of here. Check this out. Now this came out right over there by that campfire. You see the dimple in it right in the middle? And on the opposing side, another dimple. I think that was a little bit of a nutting stone going on. A nutting stone was just a rock with a small depression in it. If you had to hull a bunch of nuts, well, you need something where the nut is going to rest stably while you whack it with a rock and break that hole. So a nutting stone would have had a simple depression ground into it so the nut just stayed in place, didn't roll around all over the place Check on you. Out. Look at there. One large piece right in the center. That's very cool. We're gonna check around and underneath, um, looking for materials, because sometimes they heat treated materials uh, for napping purposes. Mostly flint and chert, but there is a little bit of discussion on whether or not they tried to heat treat quartz. So if we were to find some large preform type quartz in or under this fire, that would be a pretty good little piece of thing to know, but um, I think for the most part it was flint that they heat treated. And the ground looks pretty solid beneath the fire level, beneath that rock. Got another one? Uh-uh. No? Just clay. Alright, we'll come back and show you if we find anything else cool. Well, we did find one large piece of quartz right there at the bottom of the fire level very possible one just slipped in but um, I don't know possibly could have been trying to heat treat something it's hoping for a little bit more of that but we're not done yet This is the other base rock. Oh, a very large piece coming out. There's another one. Red is over here washing our finds for the day in some nice clean water. <laughs> yeah. Where do we end up with? There's the drill, which also came from right beside the fire. I just think that is awesome. You got these tools. I mean, they're sitting right there. You got all these tools right there coming out. There's that big piece of quartz that came out of the fire. We're just keeping that. And where's our, there's a little crude point. Where's that good one? Yeah, 
that point. Not a whole lot for the projectile points today. That's a, a thumb scraper uniface. And back of a blade came out. That's it for today. I tell you, the campfire is the best part of it for me. That was really neat to see that come out. We'll be back. All right, guys, back on location here at this camp that Red discovered. It's always a good idea to check the piles for artifacts after a good rain, and I think I've got one, if not two, artifacts that have come out of this really unsifted pile of dirt. Mm, that's not one. I thought for a second that was quartz, but it's not. <clears throat> But the other one is, it was over here, laying on the back side. A little crude dude, but a little more a mountain. I'm seeing a lot of those coming out of here. So, late archaic, middle archaic period. And I'll let you know when I see something else. All right, here we go again with a good indication of time spent at this camp. This is Knox Chert. And uh, not a fresh break. There's dirt stuck to it. But that is a cool little find right there. Those chert points are always so pretty. All right, red has pulled out what I think is a hoe and I've never found one before but boy that edge right there looks ground to me and I'm almost positive that's what that is so we'll look online and try to find some examples um, to back up my claims or prove me to be an idiot to go either way but I do believe that's what he's got it's really important to us to try to find everything that we can find at this site. So we bring a lot of material back, as you can tell from the table. But I'm glad we do, because things like this piece of soapstone sometimes slip past. Covered in mud, it's hard to identify some things. But this thing is ground on all edges. And it was probably headed to becoming a gorget or something like that one day. Turns out this piece of soapstone might be key to understanding why this site's even there. Red talked to some of the older people in the community and they told him there was a soapstone mine within about 100 yards of where we're digging, a Native American soapstone mine. They knew where it was and they went there as children. It's now covered by a road pushed through the mountains some years ago. That's why it's important to take artifacts from a site like this. This site may not be here in a few years. Another really cool piece that came out was this material, which, boy, you talk about deceptive. Red's wife actually found this, and it was a great find. Now, this piece is just a rock, but it's the same material as what I'm about to show you. And it seems to have a little bit of evidence of being in the fire, and here's why. The other side of this piece is heavily ground. You can see that slight kerf. This was probably a piece of a stone bowl, which I've been looking for because there's a lack of pottery at this site. Um, this site probably predates, for the most part, uh, the use of pottery. And so stone bowls, that would be something that you would find here. This is the first piece. All right, guys, I am going to leave you right there for now. There is more coming from this site. Hopefully some amazing things to teach us a little bit more about the past. But before I go, I want to say one thing. If you're going to get out there and start artifact hunting or digging for artifacts, you need to check what the law has to say about that. Now, where I live, private land with permission, that is legal. But even though it's legal, there are going to be some, and I fully anticipate a little bit of blowback, that say that what I'm really doing is destroying history. Well, in small part, I don't disagree with that. 
there is an element of history that is being destroyed by the way that Red and I are going about finding these artifacts. We're not trained archeologists. We don't know everything that they would know and we're missing some stuff. But I told you that part of this site is already lost. It's buried underneath roads. It's been carved up. We're 20 feet away from an old cornfield where the context of that dirt is chewed all to pieces. Chances are in 10, 15 years where we're at, it will be a house site or a farm field. And this small little area of land, it too will be gone. So while we may be destroying some history just because of our lack of knowledge, I think we're saving much more. And so we're not going about this completely stupid. We are keeping all the artifacts from this site together. They're not being sold on eBay. They're not being passed around to friends. They're not being used as giveaways for the YouTube channel. They stayed together. And we're doing our best to document things like the exact location. I even want to take some measurements uh, in between fire pits. Really pinpoint this in case in the future it is accessible to somebody that knows a little bit more. We're keeping things like the charcoal so they can be carbon dated. We're doing the best that we can, and that's why I'm gonna to continue to do it. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe give us a thumbs up, give us a share. That helps us out a whole lot. See you guys soon.